We already spoke about calculating electric field due to a dipole on the axis of it. And the far away electric field on the axis looks like this, where P is called as the dipole moment and we define P as the product of the charge Q and the distance 2A between them. We discussed all the properties of a dipole and how the dipole moment is the identity of a dipole. Today we're going to talk about electric field on the equator of the dipole. This is the axis and if you draw a line perpendicular to the axis and make sure that the line passes through the center of the dipole, we'll call that as the equator. So here we have a point P, let's call it as point P. And our goal now is to calculate the electric field at this point. Now really you should be able to do this yourself because we have solved problems in two dimension in Coulomb's law and electric fields and everything. So feel free to pause this video any moment, maybe now, and start doing this. And if you get stuck in between, play it until a point where you again get comfortable to solve it yourself. So let's see what the electric field over here looks like and eventually we'll go far away on the equator. All right, let's begin. So to calculate the electric field, we're going to do the same thing as we always do, the superposition principle. So we are first going to calculate the electric field at this point due to this charge. Let me give the charge a name. Let's call it as A. And that electric field, the electric field is always along the line joining the point and the charge. And so that's going to be in either in this direction or this one. It's a positive charge and therefore the field lines are away. You get electric field this way. Let me call this as EA. And then we are going to calculate the electric field due to the negative charge. It's going to be along this line again. Since it's a negative charge, it sucks the electric field. And so the electric field will be in this direction. Let me call that electric field as EB. First, we'll calculate the two magnitudes and then we'll figure out how to add them vectorially. All right, so EA. We are going to use the same formula, kq by r square. It's going to be kq divided by this distance squared. Let's call that as x for now. So that's going to be x squared. And if you look at eb, that's going to be kq, which is the same charge q, because it's a dipole. Divide by, look at the symmetry, it's also x, x squared. Let's quickly understand what x is. You can use this triangle Pythagoras theorem. And Pythagoras theorem tells us, I'm going to write that somewhere over here. x squared is the hypotenuse, should be equal to a squared plus r squared. And therefore we can go ahead and write this as kq divided by a squared plus r squared. And this is kq divided by a squared plus r squared. So the two electric fields have exactly the same magnitude, but they have different directions. Now we can add them either by using the vector addition formula directly, or we can decompose them. I prefer to decompose. I'm going to choose my two axes, which is going to be one this way, horizontal, let's say, and the other one along the equator. Let's choose one angle as theta. I'm going to call this angle as theta. Then you can see that electric field EA can be written as one component over here along theta, which is EA cos theta, and another component this way, which is EA sin theta. Similarly, electric field EB can be worked out, and you get EB cos theta. Notice this angle is the same due to symmetry, and so you get now EB cos theta and one component this side which is going to be EB sin theta. I'm not going to write that over here, but you can, let me just write that, EB sin theta. Okay, now if you look at this carefully, EA and EB have the same magnitude as you can see over here, and therefore Ea sin theta and Eb sin theta are in the opposite vectors, they're going to cancel out. And these two guys are going to add up. So my net electric field will be along the horizontal. 
So, the total electric field or the net field is going to be Ea plus no, Ea cos theta plus Eb cos theta. But E and Eb are the same thing, so it's just going to be 2 Ea or Eb, it's one of them, Kq divided by A square plus R square times cos theta. Or that will be 2kq by a square plus r square times a cos theta. Well, we need to figure we need to figure out what cos theta is. If you look here again, if this angle is theta. This angle is theta. All right. So corresponding angles. And so from this triangle, I hope you can see that we have three sides x, a, and r. The diagram is a little bit messy. But anyways, from this triangle, you can pretty much see that cos theta is the adjacent side A divided by x. Hypotenuse. A divided by x, and the hypotenuse is, is over here. So it's going to be the square root of A square plus x square. And you get a square root because this time you want x. So you have to take the root. And so there we have it. The net electric field is going to be 2 k q a divided by a square plus r square 4 to the power 3 by 2. I hope you can see how. Here is a 1 and here is a half. Half and 1 give us 3 by 2. But our goal is to go far away. So let's now use the fact that the point P is far away from the dipole system. So let's go far away here. Therefore, we are going R much bigger than A. What approximation can we do? Well, I've, we have already discussed, we can't do anything with the A that stays there. But in the denominator, hmm, I, can, I, can, I think I can forget about A square because R square plus A square is pretty much A square. So we're going to use R square plus A square is almost R square. In that case, we get the net field as 2kqa divided by r square power 3 by 2 but the square and the 1 over 2 cancels and you end up with r power 3 and then if you use this one q times 2a is the dipole moment then we can rewrite this formula now as look at here 2a and q that is the dipole moment 2a is the distance and Q is the charge, charge multiplied by distance of the two charges is the dipole, dipole moment, sorry. So this is going to be P into K, let me write this as K into P divided by R cube, ta-da, there we have it. And that is on the equator. So you can put an EQ there, all right? So there's the expression for the electric field due to the dipole on the equator and again notice on the equator also the electric field purely depends only on the dipole moment that's one and second is also a one over r cube field so you get exactly the same result not exactly pretty much the same result except for one tiny fact that on the axis the field is twice as strong as you get on the equator okay so there we have it in the next video, we will look at these things in, in the vector forms. So, let's do that next time.